Good afternoon, my name's Colonel Mark Elwood and I'm the commander of the British Armed Forces Training Unit here in Suffield, Alberta. And I offer you a warm welcome on behalf of all the officers and soldiers that currently reside here in the beautiful prairie lands of Eastern Alberta. For the last two years I've been personally privileged to attend British Day at Spruce Meadows, so it is with great sadness uh, that I reflect on the fact that we're not there meeting in person this year. The British Army has been here for some 48 years and we have been in support of Spruce Meadows from the very, very outset with our Household Cavalry, with our Royal Artillery King's Troop and with some of our fantastic military musicians. So I want to take this opportunity to personally thank Marg, Nancy, Linda and the whole of the Southern family for their unwavering support to the Armed Forces family, whether Canadian or British. The hospitality we receive at Spruce Meadows is truly humbling. Sadly, COVID has taken its toll on all of us this year. The impact on the training here in Suffield has been significant. But we must all play our part to protect our community and to beat this most challenging global pandemic. For the last 15 years or so, I and many soldiers like me have been fighting our nation's enemies abroad in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Syria and many other uh, places across the world. But today our greatest threat and challenge is being fought on the home front within and amongst our community. So I would like to offer my personal gratitude, admiration and respect to the people who now carry forward that fight. From the public officials who give us their direction and guidance, to the wonderful, incredible people of the Alberta Health Service, to the care workers who look after the most vulnerable in our community, to the grocery store attendants who ensure we're provisioned to enable us to do our duty to separate, to isolate and to distance ourselves as required. It is sad that we're not together here this year, but I'm positive that we will be watching great horse jumping and celebrating our great nation's friendship and alliance at British Day at Spruce Meadows next year in 2021. So thank you for your courage, your kindness and your continued support. And I look very much forward to seeing you all in person next year. the Spruce Meadows Masters. A landmark on the grounds of Spruce Meadows, the British House is an acknowledgement of the relationship and collaboration between Spruce Meadows and Great Britain. It has been our honour at Spruce Meadows to host so many influential British individuals, military marching bands and top level athletes over the years at the Masters. Just last week, Spruce Meadows President and Chief Executive Officer Linda Southern Hethcott and ATCO Chair and Chief Executive Officer Nancy Southern had a chance to virtually sit down with a very special guest, the British High Commissioner to Canada, Her Excellency Susan Lejeune Delgasic. It's wonderful to be even virtually in the presence of Nancy Southern and Linda, he Linda Hethcott uh, this afternoon. Um, I would much rather be with you both in person, but that's not possible. Um, and I would much rather be coming to Spruce Meadows uh, next month for a, uh, a real uh, Spruce Meadows Masters, but unfortunately that's not going to be possible either. So this is the next best thing. Um, and we're going to have a talk this afternoon, particularly about the British connections of Spruce Meadows. Um, and as High Commissioner, I have been, I've spent many happy days with you in your amazing facilities uh, in Calgary. Um, and they have been magical moments for me and my husband, who, uh, as you know, is a great horseman himself. 
Um, and I wanted to talk to you this afternoon a little bit about how the British connection developed and what it means to you both um, for our own virtual British Day this year. And the first question is about um, how that British connection actually started. You know, how, how, how is it that there's such a strong connection between the UK and Spruce Meadows? And perhaps, I don't know, I don't know how we do it. Perhaps Linda, I'll ask you first and then Nancy, you can come in. Sure, well, I, I'll start, but uh, I do think Nancy ne needs to come in. I think when um, my mother and father, our mother and father, um, were planning on building Spruce Meadows, they had toured around the world. And one of the places they had gone to was Hickstead and um, had great advice from Douglas Bunn um, and had met um, the chef to keep at the time, Ronnie Massarella. And he, right away from the very beginning, um, sent to Spruce Meadows in 1977, which was our First Nations Cup, a top team. And Nancy, maybe you can help me, but I do think it was um, Carolyn Bradley with Tigra, Liz Edgar, Mark, Captain Mark Phillips at the time, um, David Broom, and, and ever since then, um, the British have sent, you know, top, top teams to be able to compete at the Masters. So it really was grounded from our learnings of how to build a facility um, like Hickstead and be, aspire to be a facility very much like Hickstead. Yes, I think, uh, well, I agree with Linda, uh, Your Excellency. And by the way, it's just a delight to be able to get together virtually. Um, as you said, it is, falls far short of an in-person meeting, but it's terrific to be able to chat. Um, yes, when, when mom and dad first envisioned Spruce Meadows, they decided that they wanted to build a place that was um, a place where the world could come and, and feel at home. And for sure, Great Britain was the very first to support us and believe in us. And I actually think, um, Linda, maybe it was David or Harvey Smith that came that first year. Um, and then Caroline Bradley came a little bit later, but the teams have just been a storybook of a history legacy of show jumping in Great Britain. But I was just gonna to touch on one other thing, Your Excellency, and that is our grandfather uh, came to Canada from Great Britain out of Plymouth. And my father, our father, always loved history. And, one, and his two great heroes in history were the Duke of Wellington and of course, Churchill. And so that, that deep connection that he felt to Great Britain, it was very important to him when he was a young man to try and get his British passport, even though he'd been born here in Canada. Um, and so there was a very strong tie from both the sport perspective, uh, business perspective, but also his own personal history. Yeah, it's, and, and, your, and your family history mirrors so many uh, Canadian families' histories so where, with those links back to the UK where there's a real sense of identity and a sense of, you know, that it still matters today. And those names that you both mentioned were the names that I grew up with watching show jumping on the television as a child, you know, the, the greats. But as you say, the greats continue to come to Spruce Meadows, um, not just British athletes, obviously, but athletes from across the world. You attract the best show jumpers from across the world. But if, if you could each pick uh, a memorable moment, uh, a sporting moment, what, what is your own particular favorite? Um, well, there are so many in, in the history books. Um, of course, they, the British team was dominant in the BMO Nations Cup. But I think my, my very special moment, which is newer, it was in 2015 when Scott Brash uh, won the Rolex Grand Slam. So that was a, a huge accomplishment. It was something that uh, no one felt could ever be done. And for him to actually win it um, at Spruce Meadows on the, the Sunday, which was British Day, was really very, very special. Um, and uh, Nancy, do you have a particular favorite moment? Well, I do. I have a favorite moment. It goes back a few years, and I'm not even sure which year it was. But uh, one of Great Britain's greats, Nick Skelton, who's also uh, quite a character. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> Well, actually, all of the British riders have been real characters, but um, winning the Super Bowl weekend of the Masters, he won 
uh, was double clean in the BMO Nations Cup. He won uh, the CP Grand Prix, and he also won the uh, Parcours de Chasse all in the same weekend. Wow. With this, with um, and the Grand Prix and the and the Nations Cup were with the same horse. To me, that was really quite remarkable, um, but very much like Scott Brash's win, very remarkable. And so um, Nick Skelton is a heartfelt favorite of mine. I know that he's also been quite a challenge for Linda on the show jumping grounds, <laughs> but he's a great competitor. Yeah, and he's the uh, reigning Olympic gold medalist. Yes. Uh, one that, I mean, I can't, I can't remember exactly how old he was, but uh, won the show jumping gold at the last Olympics, which was- Yeah, he's my cool. age. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a bit younger, but. <laughs> well, and you know, he really is a force in the sport. Um, he's retired now from show jumping as far as competing, but he is a force. He won uh, the Grand Prix at Spruce Meadows four times and wow. on four different horses. Yeah. And it wasn't his Olympic horse. So he really is a top horseman um, and has been um, really very, very special in our sport. He, he really is. Uh, yeah, he's world class. Yeah, and they, uh, he and, and, and the Whitaker brothers and, and the others mm -hmm. have also encouraged uh, young talent, which I think is very nice. You know, they haven't just sat in their, in their ivory towers enjoying their success, but they've made sure that they, they, they are helping the next generation uh, to thrive, which is, which is really good. Because it can be seen, I think, as a bit of an elitist sport. You know, people assume that anybody who gets into uh, horse riding, show jumping, dressage, whatever it is, has to come from a privileged background. But the names that you that, that you both mentioned this afternoon are certainly not from backgrounds like that. Right. And they are people who got to the top of their sport because they are gifted athletes, not because they had wealthy parents and the right connections. Right. Exactly. Um, so uh, you mentioned, I think, uh, uh, Linda, Ronnie Massarella and Pamela Carruthers right at the beginning of your story. Could you tell us a little bit about the role that they played as, as, as Bruce Meadows beca became an international sporting venue? Uh, Pamela Crothers uh, was hired by the family to design the actual jumping fields at Spruce Meadows, the All Canada Ring, the International Ring, and the North American Ring. And um, she really believed that the rings would help to um, educate our athletes. And she was, she was an educator herself in her course design. Um, she built difficult courses, but she also built courses for our Canadian athletes to learn. And I believe in our history of, of our Canadian athletes at um, evolving over the years that Spruce Meadows has been um, running. So 45 years, we're celebrating our 45th anniversary this year. It really was the, um, the seeds that uh, Pamela laid um, for our athletes, our younger athletes, to be able to learn and be top competitors in the sport. Because over the years, Canada has... Um, you know, punched above their weight in, in our sport. And I think a lot of that had to do with what Pamela designed as far as the, the, the fields that we jump on, the turf, and, and the design that she, she produced in the early years. And Ronnie Massarella, as the chef to keep, he always sent his best team. He always, he always, and what that did for our Canadians was have them rise to that level. Uh, because they were the ones that we had to try and compete against and the world had to compete against because um, Great Britain was such a strong force in the sport and he was um, he was caring he was um, compassionate but he was um, a tough competitor and he always wanted to win in the ring. Great memories mm. and uh, perhaps Nancy I will ask you about uh, the military connection because as well as the sporting connection with the UK, um, Spruce Meadows has a very strong military connection. And obviously there's a, there's a British military presence in, in Alberta, a big training base that we have at, at Suffield. But you've also managed to maintain a connection with the pomp and circumstance side of, of, of the British military, the British Armed Forces, with wonderful bands and um, mounted uh, troops that come across every year. Could you tell us a little bit about how that happened and how you've managed to maintain it? Well, I, I think the, uh, the military presence at Spruce Meadows actually goes back to my earlier comments about our, our father's deep interest in military history and, um, and his tie and connection to Great Britain. Um, and that, 
the other side of that was because show jumping is new in North America 45 years ago, the way he wanted to build it was around pageantry and tradition and not only just have the top sport, but have an event worthy of world premier sports that, um, that incorporated the, the very important use of the horse in former times in the military. And that whole connection came together. It was, it was very important to our fa father, co-founder of Spruce Meadows. And my mom loved the bands, she loves music. And so not only the history of the cavalry, um, but the, the marching bands all came together. And my, my, our father worked very hard at building those relationships um, with the Royal Military, through the Canadian military. Um, and I think that, that that's been a real signature for us. Ob obviously, Suffield being so close by was a great addition for us to be able to tap into. But uh, the household cavalry and the, the, the Royals and Blues, they, that, was, um, that was something very special. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that our mum was selected by Her Majesty to be her lady-in-waiting for her last major Canadian tour. Yeah, I, I had a fantastic conversation with your mother about that and her memories, her memory is so sharp anyway, but her memories of, 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 of what happened and the role that she played, it's fascinating. It would make a great film. I think if you're ever looking for, for a sideline, as a family, there would, there's a great film in your mother's experiences as a lady in waiting. She could play herself. I don't think you need anybody else to do it. She could still play herself. Um, and I think that when, when I've met the military who've come across from the UK to participate in Spruce Meadows, um, they love it. Um, so it's not, I mean, you're, you're getting the pageantry, as you said, and, and a fantastic spectacle. And, and I, I think that we do that stuff better than anybody else in the world. I'm biased, obviously, but I think the precision and the beauty and the uniforms and magnificence of it. Um, and and, and the, the beauty of the animals as well, because they have just such stunning horses. Um, but uh, you can see for them, it's, it's a real privilege to be part of it, to come to Canada and to be at Spruce Meadows and to take part in those events. They, they love it as much as you do. So I think it's, it's a wonderful tradition. It's hard work for them yeah. because they are on guard, color guard, uh, in heat, you know, 30 degree weather and snow and rain and howling winds. And, but I think I, I, there's a, there is a great uh, camaraderie amongst the, the people of Spruce Meadows, um, the military, and there's a joining of the, the British military and the Canadian military at Spruce Meadows that is quite, quite interesting with the uh, Lord Strathcona's household cavalry. And uh, and of course, at times the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and so I think that the, that has it does create a bit of a sense of an annual celebration of the tradition and pageantry of our militaries. Absolutely, and uh, of course, as well as all of that, um, we have our very own house at Spruce Meadows. There is the British House, and I wondered if it, I, either of you, um, perhaps Linda, you could tell me because I don't know. Uh, how come there is a British house at Spruce Meadows? And I'd be really interested to hear the story. I think Nancy's going to have to help me on this. Um, but it really was tied uh, to the round table, the Changing Fortunes round table and the support uh, from the internationalists that came to the round table. And um, our father uh, had asked a number of uh, sponsors to help him build that. Uh, facility and it was fitting because we had a British day and we had um, we have so many ties to the British military uh, the teams and we had uh, you know the the celebration of British day was uh, fitting to call it uh, British house and the Georgian room um, so it really is uh, it is a great tribute to our relationship and our tradition. Linda you're absolutely right it is a celebration of the relationship and the tradition I also believe that um, it, it also stemmed, you know, in uh, about uh, the late 80s and early 90s, 
when um, Great Britain was going through privatization of many of its sectors with uh, Prime Minister Thatcher, our company, uh, quite separate from Spruce Meadows, but ATCO, uh, had, had decided that we wanted to be in the independent power business. And we actually built our flagship independent power plant, which was the largest in the UK at the time, and certainly the largest project our company ATCO had taken on. Uh, that was the bar Barking Power Station, um, just downriver from Canary Wharf. And during that time, we, we actually made a lot of uh, great partners and discovered a lot of great individual talent and, and tremendous business leaders at that time. Um, Balfour Beatty was the construction partner. Um, London Electric, which is uh, quite different at the time, but there was a man by the name of Ro Dr. Roger Irwin that was the CEO of London Electric. He went on to be the CEO of National Grid and uh, did the acquisition or merger of uh, British Gas with uh, the pipes with the wires of National Grid. Alstom was a big player in the independent power market then. And then of course, the financing for a large project of that nature over a billion pounds, um, we used the Bank of Scotland <laughs> um, and, and a number of British banks in the financing package. And uh, as our father would, would do often, he made great friends of these business leaders. And that actually was a great catalyst in the round table and being able to get the round table started and have large international discussions about uh, matters of the day. And those companies, Balfour Beatty, the Bank of Scotland, Alstom and National Grid, all wanted to be a part of Spruce Meadows. And so they actually, we, their names are on the building today. And uh, that also is part of the tradition of British House. It's fantastic. And um, uh, as you know, uh, every, every year on British Day, um, my colleague, uh, the Consul General, Caroline Saunders, hosts a fantastic party uh, to thank all our friends in Calgary for the support they've given us. Um, and we are delighted to be able to, to do that annual celebration at Spruce Meadows. I can't think of anywhere better to do it than there. Um, uh, I wanted to thank you both because um, from the UK's perspective, uh, the relationship that we have with you both uh, through sport, but also, as you pointed out, Nancy, through business um, is a really important one. And uh, in times like this where things are tough uh, and we're all going through tough times, those sorts of relationships are more, than, more important than ever. Um, and knowing uh, that we can count on each other and that these friendships can withstand this sort of uh, difficult times and sort of buffeting that, that, that we're currently going through is, is, is really important to us. Um, and as I said right at the beginning, for me, uh, Spruce Meadows has been a really important part of my, uh, my Canadian experience. And I'm really grateful to both of you and to your mother for, for making me part of your family um, and for allowing me to enjoy some really wonderful moments there. Um, I'm sure that your company and Spruce Meadows will continue to go from strength to strength, like the relationship between the UK and Canada. You know, the UK's place in the world is shifting. Um, big things will happen on the 1st of January next year when we leave the European Union. And um, that has, I think, uh, allowed us to refocus a little on some of our old friends. And Canada is right at the heart of the vision of where we want to be in the future. Um, and the relationships that, that we have, both personally and professionally, um, I think are a very, very good example of how and why that is the case. So. Thank you both so much for your time. I'm really sorry that we can't be together uh, today or, or next month, but um, I will make sure that I don't leave without um, saying a thank you to you both in person for your friendship and support for the time that I've been here. Is there anything that you would like to add before we close? Um, Your Excellency, I would like to thank you and Stefan for your friendship and to continue to help us build this very strong relationship between Spruce Meadows and Great Britain. Um, I think that the, it, I believe that you 
and Stefan actually are the epitome of what our father wanted to create at Spruce Meadows. And his legacy was to have Spruce Meadows be a place for good sport, good commerce, and good friendship. And I would like to thank you on behalf of all of us for contributing to that and helping us strengthen those relationships and continue the legacy. It's been a delight for me. For me, it really has. It's not like work at all, really. But don't tell my bosses that. <laughs> thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank really you. Very, it's been a very, very special relationship and it will continue for years to come. Um, thank you. Thank you. And I will see you, I hope, fairly soon. My name is Tony James. This is... I'm uh, Ashley. So uh, Worldwide Specialty Foods was, um, I guess, an idea I had back in 1985 when uh, the national energy policy had taken its toll on Calgary and we all needed a job. And food was what I knew. So one particular company that I'd worked with in Ontario gave me the opportunity to sell their product. And we started in a very small warehouse. And word got around that Tony had a warehouse. And the rest is history. So that was some 30 something years ago. It's a growing market. Uh, everybody thought it was maybe a little foolish in 1985 to bring French green caviar to Calgary, but it seems to be working. In my very first year, 1985, I also had some interests in a fruit farm in British Columbia uh, to go with our produce business. And we're not quite sure how it happened, but I met Mrs. Southern and she thought I was crazy selling fruit and vegetables from a table. But she heard I was in the cheese business, and so she asked me if I had Dutch cheese, and I said, I do. And she said, oh, and she said, my fam family owns Spruce Meadows. Would you like to come and sell Dutch cheese on Holland Day? And I said, sure, why not? So we found the fridge, we hauled it out to Spruce Meadows, in a van, a 2,000 pound fridge, we built a little wooden platform outside the maintenance office on Lower Plaza, just as you go down the ramp, and put a three-sided tent around it, and put a fridge on it, and we had Dutch cheese. And so for the one of the worst masters I've ever been to weather-wise, we stood there and froze to death and sold Dutch cheese. This would have been my 35th consecutive year of doing something at the Masters. As I say, it started with the, started with the Holland Day, selling cheese for Holland, and then starting a specialty business. In those days, there were about 10 nations in the Festival of Nations in Upper and Lower Plaza. So I realized what a great marketing opportunity. So. I used to sell British goods in the British Pavilion, German goods in the German Pavilion, Swiss cheese in the Swiss Pavilion, Italian goods in the Italian Pavilion, and used it purely as marketing, just to get the word out to the general public. When the Festival of Nations started to wind down, as the ethnic clubs started to fizzle out, as the people got older, it was very important to Mr. Southern to have a British presence. He was, he, was into the, he was into the Queen, he was into the military, he was so at a meeting one night in the Meadowview, he gently suggested it would be a good idea if I took over the British Pavilion. And it, it started with a couple of tables and then it progressed to a building that Mr. Southern built for uh, Garrods of London. I don't know if you know, but he convinced Garrods of London to come. Garrods were the people who made Princess Diana's engagement ring. So he convinced Garrods to come to Spruce Meadows, and they bought about a million pounds worth of inventory to Spruce Meadows, and he built them a building. And Garrods came for two years, God bless them, and then when they left, um, the building was handed over to myself and Jim from the Scottish shop. For many years now, we 
build about a thousand square foot British grocery store. Uh, we put in maybe 10 pieces of refrigeration. We sell cheeses, we sell prepared foods, and a whole selection of British grocery products. And people come, we even have a lady comes from Montana to buy products. That's what it's all about. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. Um, we've had people come in for years. Um, Ashley ran into one on the weekend. Yeah, I ran into someone on Sunday that was really sad that she wasn't gonna get to see the British Pavilion this year. So it's, it's part of our year. It's great. I've, I've always believed Bruce Meadows is a great place for small businesses to promote their businesses. You don't have success to start with, but if you play it right, you're never going to meet as many people in one place that you can potentially share your products and your services with. You know, for somebody like me that's been there so long, and there's very few places people can go these days that costs virtually nothing. And, you know, for families who prepare themselves to go out to Spruce Meadows and take their own picnic and, um, and go watch the event, I mean, it's a great, safe place to, to take a family. And, you know, once you're there, you don't have to go anywhere. You really don't have to worry about anything. And I hope, I hope that maintains itself and stays the same forever. From my point of view, I love Spruce Meadows. I mean, I grew up at Spruce Meadows, right? And I was selling candy in our booth from the time I was, you know, five, six years old. And I would run off with $20 from the cash box and go and get beef on a bun from Ernie, or I'd go and get a pizza from the guys at the, the Italian booth. And, and when we stopped doing the June and the July shows, I still wanted to go to Spruce Meadows but I wanted a function. I needed a function. I needed something to do. And I become I became really friendly with Jennifer who runs transportation. So I actually then became a volunteer at Spruce Meadows and drive golf cart the rest of the year. So I'm really missing that as well this year, picking up riders and judges from the airport. And, but it keeps my June and July full and I'm still at Spruce Meadows and still experiencing Spruce Meadows and still doing something.